Good evening. I'm Gail and many. I'm a retired United Methodist pastor, and I attend St. Matthew's United Methodist Church in Bowie. And uh, for the past uh, number of months, I've been presenting some Methodist history uh, as part of our Friday evening devotion. I'd like to begin with a word of scripture from the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, verses one through nine. I'm reading from the King James Version. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think of himself in, to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Loving Father, you do remind us that we are to bear one another's burdens and that what we soweth, that shall we reap. And you remind us That we should not be weary in well-doing and helping others of showing acts of kindness. For in due season, we ourselves will reap. And we know, O oh God, from your word, we must be careful in doing this. And we do so that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This evening I want to share the story about one of our Methodist pioneers. His name was Jesse Lee. He was born... In 1758, in Prince George's County, not Maryland, but Virginia, the son of Nathaniel and Elizabeth Lee, who were prosperous landowners and slaveholders. They were members of the Church of England. They were introduced to Methodism, and their son Jesse was also. Their home became a regular preaching place on the Brunswick Circuit, which extended to Halifax and other counties into North Carolina. Jesse would attend the many revivals and listen to the words spoken by the preachers as they would stop by the the family home. Jesse had little schooling and in his young years was very shy. He was asked to care for a widowed relative and there he became less shy and he became more religious. In the Methodist Church he was appointed as a class leader and he began then to hold 
class meetings in the neighborhood. He preached his first sermon in 1779 at a place called the Old Barn. He was asked to replace a circuit rider by the name of John Dickens for several weeks. Lee became the first Methodist pacifist when in 1790 he was drafted into the army. He refused to bear arms and camped at a town near Raleigh, North Carolina. He was placed under guard. There he spent his time singing, praying, and preaching. He offered to perform other duties and was chosen to become a wagon driver. And everyone said yes, and he traveled with the army to parts of North Carolina. He was discharged honorably in 1780 after three months' service. In 1783, Lee joined the Virginia Conference of the Methodist Church, and he was sent as a junior preacher to the Caswell Circuit. That circuit was described as a moral wilderness. For the next six years, he preached in North Carolina, Virginia, and Maryland. He was unable to attend the Christmas conference in Baltimore in 1784 when the Methodist Church was organized. In 1785, he met Bishop Asbury, and Lee was surprised to see Asbury dressed in a black gown, cassock. He objected to the way he was dressed. He thought he was too formal and ill-suited to the worship of Methodists at the time. When Asbury heard what he had said, he was not hurt by this. In fact, they became friends over the years. Lee's next venture as a Methodist circuit rider took him to the newly formed Stanford Circuit in Connecticut in 1790. He would become known as the pioneer of Methodism in New England. His first sermon in New England was under the old elm tree on Boston Commons. He was a huge man. He was six feet tall. He weighed over 250 pounds. He journeyed tirely, tirelessly through New England. And I think this is interesting. He often used two horses one to ride and one to lead, and then part way through, they would trade off. His singing drew large crowds. His preaching was described as being forceful. He once remarked, I did not give them a, well, a velvet mouth preaching. The General Conference in 1790, he was privately ordained a deacon by Bishop Asbury, and the next year, 1791, he was publicly ordained an elder. He continued to serve in New England for another seven years until he was called by Bishop Asbury to assist him. Lee shared this about the journey with Asbury, but we're able to find some of his writings. He says many camp meetings had been held in the Carolinas in the 1790s. He never could learn whether 
They began in the upper parts of South Carolina and Tennessee or in Kentucky, but he believed they took place by necessity and without design. Were such crowds of people collected together that no house could hold them and there were not neighbors enough to entertain them. And when the work of the Lord was uncommonly powerful and souls were under deep distress, the meeting would continue all night without intermission. So it was thought prayer to advise the people to come prepared so to tarry, to bring provision both for men and beasts that they might stay together three or four days and wait upon the Lord continually. Lee's last venture as a Methodist circuit rider took him to the newly formed Stanford Circuit in Connecticut in 1790. He preached in Virginia, having left New England, and he preached in Virginia for 14 years. In 1809, he was elected as a chaplain of the U.S. House of Representatives. He was re-elected over the next four sessions. In 1814, he was chosen to become the chaplain of the U.S. Senate. In 1815, he transferred from the Virginia Conference to the Baltimore Conference, where he served in Annapolis. While attending a camp meeting in Hillsborough, North Carolina, he became ill and died at the age of 58. He is buried at Mount Olivet Cemetery in Baltimore, not far from the grave of Bishop Asbury. Let us pray. Give us rest this night and awaken us in the, the new day to be of service in your kingdom. Make clear what our assignment is and then give us the strength to fulfill it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.